Hello there, and welcome to Greetings from Florida, a weekly roundup of the horrible news stories to come out of Florida. Yes, Florida, a test kitchen for new and illicit drugs. For our first story, a Florida man went to great lengths to seal his identity, chewing off his fingertips and scraping them against the police car's metal caging. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough, and he will be adding Grand Theft Auto, identity and credit card fraud, and illegal firearms charges to his rap sheet of assault and illegal resident status. While that stuff is bad, is it really worth turning yourself into Edward Scissorhands over? For our next story, a woman ended up shirtless after driving her car through a house and into the kitchen. We're not sure how the woman ended up in her bra and pants, but according to her lawyer, she did not leave the scene of the accident, just left briefly to go look for something. We assume for her shirt. Her mother came to her defense at the trial, saying the house was not well lit and was sitting atop a tight curve. So obviously it's the house's fault. It presented itself as too tempting of a target. This is the worst form of victim blaming ever. You're actually saying the house asked for it? For our next story, crime is up. Police on civilian crime, that is. Over the past six days, seven people have been shot. All minorities, too mentally challenged. They're dead. These crimes beg the question, is your neighborhood safe from the police? Can we ever be safe? From the police. They hide in the shadows, waiting for you to drive by, so as to ambush you. Can we really be safe from the police? The names of all the officers involved have been kept quiet until super serial investigations have cleared them of all charges. Now to go from a story of going way too soft on the police to going way too hard. The Sanford Police Department of Trayvon Martin fame recently dismissed an officer who was doing a detail at a concert for the band Vital Remains. But when the lead singer found out the officer was a fan of theirs, he invited him on stage to sing a portion of their song, De-Christianize. Unfortunately, videos of his 15-second performance started popping up, leading to his dismissal. Police Chief Cecil B. Smith was quoted regarding this incident. Keep in mind, this is where an officer sings and does not shoot an unarmed citizen. And quote, an incident of this nature erodes the fibers of trust which already exist between the community and the police, and it will not be tolerated within the Sanford Police Department. Continuing, it's important that the agency must maintain and improve upon the trust built within the community. Based on the information received, it is imperative that we have no misapprehensions of the immediate actions taken by the police department in a situation of this nature and that we will continue to provide professional services to all citizens of Sanford. Keep in mind, this is from a police agency that felt the armed man patrolling a neighborhood shooting an unarmed team required no further investigation. Our next story was sent in to us by one of our fans. A Florida woman is under arrest after one drunk night. She called the police to bring her chicken wings and cigarettes, saying she would pass out if she didn't get it. Yes, it would be great if we lived in a world where the police brought us cigarettes and chicken, but at the current rate, we do not. So instead, the woman's looking at a speedy arrest, right to order. Police order? For our next story, a woman realizes, surprise, you're a murderer, after a friend she punched ended up dead. The incident began as an issue of unreturned shoes that led to a fight, that led to a fall, that ended up with the police being called. The woman beaten in the fight refused medical care, which was her undoing, as she turned up dead the next morning. Hell of a way to wake up to your day, a newly crowned murderer. For our last story, we have the kingpin of illegal yard sales. Andrew Zamara will be serving some serious time for trafficking drugs and firearms in South Florida. Though he has not been found guilty yet, he was the subject of an 18-month undercover investigation where he sold over $60,000 worth of wholesale drugs and guns to the undercover cops while boasting the drug source and gun thieves supplying him. Before you dismiss him as a very liberal businessman, it should be noted that he reinvested his profits in the most sleazy market, Florida real estate, leading to real estate fraud charges. His lawyer defended him by saying the police wasted so much time and energy only to stack the charges on his poor client. But this defense only lasts you as long as it takes you to realize the reason he has so many serious charges 
is because he committed so many serious crimes. Set aside the drug and weapons trafficking, he's still facing social security fraud, tax evasion, and failing to file for proper business permits. Well, that's it for this week, everyone. This week's episode was brought to you by Florida Citizenry. Yes, Florida Citizenry, an apocalyptic militia waiting to serve. So until next week, this is Nick and Mike saying, Florida makes the jokes. We make the puns. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Please like and subscribe. Please like and subscribe.